This is the second video in the series about factoring trinomials using the factor box method. This is a viewer challenge. Um, a viewer of some of my videos on factoring wanted more examples about how to use this method. So here we go. The example here is 9n squared minus 45n plus 50. All right, again, the idea is to take the factors of 9n squared and put them in this column right here. All right, so obviously that could be a 3n and a 3n or a 9n and an n. I need to kind of figure out the best way to do it. I'm just going to guess and say 9n and 1n or just an n. Okay, we'll start with that. And then, of course, I take the factors of 50 and put them there. And that could be 5 and 10. It could be 25 and 2. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure where to go yet, but let's look at the signs. The signs of the middle term and the third term are always a good clue. You want to know whether you have to subtract to get the middle term or add to get the middle term. And what the signs are of these two factors right here. All right, notice that it's positive 50, so the signs will have to be the same. And it's a negative middle term, which means that I have to have a negative pair of terms here. All right? So let's just go ahead and try this. And I'm going to go ahead and say, um, I think 50 and 1 is going to be too big. All right? 50 is going to be uh, too big of a number to use here. So I'm going to go ahead and use 5 and 10. Now, remember that the way we do this, it doesn't matter whether I put the 5 there and the 10 there or switch that order at all because I'll be trying both combinations anyway. All right? So let's go ahead and look across. 9n minus 5 times minus 5 is negative 45n. Now that's not good because I already have 45n there and of course I get negative 10n here and there's no way that those will add up to the proper middle term. All right. Notice that I multiplied straight across to get that. So if I um, go diagonally here all right, let me go ahead and cross out these results. And so instead of going straight across, let's multiply n times negative 5, <clears throat> which is negative 5n. And 9n times negative 10 is negative 90. Well, obviously, that's way too big. Okay, so that's not going to work. All right. Um, you know, that means that maybe instead of 9n and n, that's maybe it's 3n and 3n. All right, let's try that. Again, this factor box method doesn't eliminate the guesses. It, in some cases, can speed things up for you. So it's just a matter of kind of practicing a lot and trying it. Now let's go with 3 times negative, 3n times negative 5. It's going straight across. So it would be a negative 15n. All right, is that going to work? Well, 3n times negative 10 is negative 30n. And there we go. It took me a few guesses but I got it. Remember, we're going to add those two middle terms together. So in this column, I have 3n and 3n, and that means I place the two parts of the binomial go right here and here. All right, and then I have a negative 5 and a negative 10, and it actually isn't going to matter which is which because both of those 3n's are in play. So remember that the middle term always comes from these inside terms multiplied together combined with these outside terms multiplied together. All right, so that's going to be the factored version of my trinomial. Now you try this one and pause the video, give it a shot on paper, and then come on back. All right, let's look at 4b squared. I'm going to guess, my first guess is going to be a 4b and a b. All right. Now 21, if I think about being um, 20, 1 times 1, I'm thinking that's probably going to be too big. I'm going to split that up and try 7 and 3. Again, the next step is to look at the signs to see if we have to add or subtract. Now the middle term is negative. The third term is positive. The positive sign here means that these two factors have to be the same sign. In this case, they both have to be negative. All right, so we're going to add to get to the middle term. Now if I go across, multiply across, it's going to give me negative 28b and negative 3b. 
Now it's close. That would give me negative 31b, but that's too big. All right. Now before you rewrite the terms, uh, the factors, you go diagonally. Let's go b times negative 7 would be negative 7b. And diagonally going down there is negative 12b. If I add those together, what does that give me? Negative 19b. Okay, that was very close. Doesn't quite work. All right, I'm going to guess that my 7 and 3 are correct, but instead of 4b times b, let's try 2b times 2b. Okay? Again, when you draw your box and try these guess and check, trial and error type of processes, use a pencil, uh, cross the numbers out, just kind of keep track of what you're doing and stay organized. Now I'm actually going to go in this direction. This is what some students have told me works. You do some guesses over on the right hot side and then you do some guesses on the left side. Well, so what is 2b times negative 7? Negative 14b. All right, what is negative 3 times 2b? Negative 6b. And yes, when we add those together, that will give me my middle term that I'm looking for, negative 20b. So, again, I place my 2b in both directions. 2b times 2b, it comes from that column right there. And then I have a negative 7 and a negative 3, and it actually won't really matter which is which because they're both being multiplied by 2b. So, the middle term comes from negative 14b right there and negative 6b right here. So there you go. The answer, 2b minus 7, 2b minus 3.